The difficulty curve for video games today has come down considerably from where it once was back in the days of two-dimensional platforming, with things like regenerating health, the ability to save anywhere, to carry more weapons and ammo than is conceivable, and no time limits, video games have by and large become easier over the decades. Which is why it's puzzling when unusually hard or punishingly difficult games come along and end up being very successful. These games teach you one thing above everything else. You suck. Because they kill you, beat you, and dance on your corpse over and over and over again. There are reasons why these games are successful though, and one of the better titles to start with is a game that quickly becomes a battle of, and lesson in, Perseverance. Demon's Souls is unquestionably one of the few games which revels in its sheer difficulty. The game's challenge mostly stems from a demanding system of attack and defense, which are both at the mercy of stamina management. Not being able to spam attacks, block infinitely, and effectively perform combat in corridors all play a factor in evening the playing field and, in a way, make the enemy stronger. The result is a game with a painfully difficult stride. However, it manages to space out its rewards just enough to make them feel like true victories. This is what drives Demon's Souls to be such an addicting game. It plays off of its extreme difficulty curve in a risk versus reward manner. The game first puts the player at a disadvantage and then asks for near perfection. The result is a system of trial by fire. Learn, die, respawn, repeat. In turn though, each reward is hard earned and the sense of accomplishment that comes with getting each one is satisfying within itself. Demon's Souls is an RPG though, and since the difficulty doesn't scale in any manner, leveling up does give gamers a crutch when playing, even if it is small. There's another difficult game though, which has no level system. It forces gamers to rely on their skills alone. Monster Hunter Tri employs similar techniques as those found in Demon's Souls to create an unusually difficult game. You have to manage both health and stamina during battle, but more importantly, the game is about knowing an enemy's routine and what its weakness is. The bulk of the Monster Hunter experience is centered around killing or capturing very large and powerful monsters throughout the world. Battles with these beasts can easily last 30 minutes. This is further complicated by how they don't show their weak points easily and many have to be tracked across load zones because they run away in mid-battle. To make things worse, each time you encounter a new larger-than-life monster, you have to contend with a time limit. All of these things lay the groundwork for Monster Hunter's difficulty curve. Skill is the only true way to overcome these challenges, as you can't level up, and forging new weapons and armor, while important, don't function as a reliable crutch for a lack of skill. Everything about the game focuses on overcoming difficulties almost through pure aptitude. This in turn makes winning a battle or capturing a fiend feel that much more rewarding. Grinding hours away on a game building actual skill for victory is far more satisfactory than grinding for fictional XP for victory. The challenge is where the fun lies, and Monster Hunter Tri truly demonstrates this point. There are some games though that can seemingly focus too much on precision in order to create challenge. Trauma Center Second Opinion is a title with heavily engaging gameplay that puts player skill to the test. The game is centered around a young, incredible surgeon, who ends up being drawn into a pseudo-war against bioterrorists. Trauma Center starts off simply and easily enough, but the difficulty ramps up rather suddenly after new types of superviruses appear. These ailments all have unique treatment methods that both require precision and speed, and everything is kept under a time constraint in the form of patient health. What propels the game to become excruciatingly difficult, though, is how defeating the worst illnesses require both amazing speed and unbelievable precision. With each successful surgery, the challenges presented increase, and sometimes the scenario under which the operation is performed is atypical to say the least. The difficulty, though, is most evident in the game's final battles, which puts so much strain on perfection that slipping up even a little 
can easily result in failure. Trauma Center Second Opinion is, without a question, one of the harder games made to date. Unfortunately, though, its rewards for victory are lackluster, and motivation to continue playing the game can easily dwindle in the face of its extremely difficult final levels. Ultimately, Trauma Center is a good example of how difficult games shouldn't be lacking in proper reward. After all, optional struggles are hardly worth the time they take to overcome if there are no rewards for enduring them. When all is said and done, hard or difficult games aren't popular or common for good reason. They challenge players, and because games are an entertainment medium, they're centered around escapism and being fun. Titles that are exigent simply don't deliver enough of either for many people. Being challenged when trying to relax isn't something most gamers seek. However, some titles have overcome this barrier, which is proof that just because a game is hard, challenging, or difficult doesn't mean it isn't good or fun. Until next time, this has been a video blog from B10G.net, May 7th, 2012. Strife out.